Joining us for this segment is Rich McKinnon. He is the president of uh, PFFM, the Professional Firefighters of Massachusetts. And uh, we're here to talk a little bit about uh, do a COVID-19 update, talk a little bit about, maybe do a little reminiscing about 2020. Not that many people want to do that these days. And also talk about the vaccine that is being distributed to uh, first responders, firefighters, police, and then looking at 2021. Rich, how are you doing? I'm doing well, Kevin. How are you? I'm doing really good. So uh, taking a look back at 2020, you know, being the president of PFFM, did, did you, in your wildest dream, knowing taking over this, this organization and leading it into, you know, uh, into a, a, a pandemic like this, what has it been like? Yeah, I mean, never in a million years did uh, I've been involved in the union my whole career, uh, came up through the ranks in the union, and never did I think I would experience or have to deal with anything uh, like we saw during the during the pandemic in 2020. What has it been like as someone who is on the ground, somebody who provides services, whether you're as a firefighter or as, or as a paramedic, what are you, you and your brothers and sisters in the fire service dealing with or have you been dealing with when it comes to um, COVID? Yeah, so our firefighters uh, this past year, 2020, and then moving on to 21, Early on in the pa pandemic, what we saw were, for immediate needs were appropriate PPE. Um, and there just wasn't enough of it out there. We were advocating uh, that our members be properly um, assembled in the proper PPE and, and you know, along with our comrades in the, um, you know, the hospitals and the, and the nursing care facilities, there just wasn't the amount of PPE that we needed. Uh, and then moving on into the pandemic, um, we had to kind of redo how, how we live in the firehouse. We live in close, close quarters, um, you know, in our workspace and in our living space, just like the general public. We had a social distance um, among our family members. And then we had members get sick uh, with COVID. So they had to quarantine from their own families. We had members in quarantine from being exposed to members that were sick. Um, so these were all things that that we had to deal with. And then now bring on a vaccine. Um, we've had some issues rolling out the vaccine uh, that we've been very active and vocal uh, in making sure that our first responders are high up uh, on the priority list and then the actual rollout of the vaccine. Um, but going into 2021, um, we're, we're hopeful. Uh, we are getting vaccinated. Um, I was just recently vaccinated. Um, but we know that this isn't over yet. We still have a long road to go, um, that some of the policies that we put in place and that we've learned from are gonna have to stay in place uh, for the immediate future. What kind of relief was it to finally get inoculated? Was it, was it something that you were anticipating and does it, does it still have, do you still have your guard up as a professional firefighter? It's the, the, the vaccine is more of a, an insurance policy, if you will. Uh, absolutely, we still have to keep our guard up. We still have to wear our mask. We still have to, um, you know, we were fortunate here in Whitman um, where we've had one member um, be diagnosed uh, with COVID. And I truly believe it's because of the policies uh, that we put in place um, and acted on why no other firefighters uh, did get COVID because um, you know, these, these members and, and Whitman and surrounding areas and throughout the state, um, our call volume went up at times, our exposures definitely, uh, increased over, uh, the pandemic, you know, and our numbers kind of did what the general public did when the general public saw an increase, uh, in COVID numbers, our membership did too, directly due to the, uh, increased exposures that our firefighters, um, took on. Yeah, it's a proud, I know, I, I heard the same thing in regards to only one member during this entire pandemic, you know, your firehouse was very fortunate. Only one person so far has has come down with it. And it isn't something that has turned into a hotspot for COVID. It's, you know, that one person and that's it. Yeah, again, we were fortunate. Um, we did a great job um, maintaining our firehouse, cleaning our firehouse, wearing our PPE. 
uh, at the appropriate times, wearing masks around the station. Um, and, you know, very difficult things to do, quite honestly. We're a close-knit group. Um, we all know each other. We all know each other's families. We hang out together um, and we work together. So it's, it's been it's been difficult uh, for the firefighters, for sure. As this as the vaccine, as we see different phases uh, being enacted for vaccination, what are, what's your thoughts looking ahead to 2021? What are the conversations you've been having with uh, emergency management officials or state officials uh, about uh, the rollout of the vaccine? Yeah, like, like anything, um, you know, as far as our union goes, we want to sit at the table. We'll be part of the solution. Um, our members have stepped up already to vaccinate uh, other first responders. They received the training, um, and we have a great relationship with Brockton Hospital and Dr. Muse. Uh, he took it on uh, very early on when it was announced that first responders were going to be in the first phase. Um, he said everyone can work under his umbrella. And I mean, he's, he's great to us anyways as a medical director uh, for our EMS system. Uh, but he actually took it on to say anyone that needed help could come under kind of his umbrella and his wing, not just the departments that he typically had a relationship and working with. Very proactive um, for firefighters and, and EMS as a whole. We, again, if you're just tuning into the segment, we're speaking with Richard McKinnon, uh, he is the president of the uh, Professional Firefighters of Massachusetts a Union, also a firefighter paramedic himself, and we're talking about COVID-19, but we're also going to talk a little bit about uh, the legislative part of his job. I've had I've been privileged to talk with Rich about some of the legislation that they put forth, trying to segue away from the COVID, but also kind of staying in that same vein. Uh, I think the last time we talked, and maybe the, the prior time, we had talked a little bit about COVID-19 and any legislation. Uh, has there been any updates in that area that you could share? No, we were actually disappointed. Um, we put in, uh, we, so for the past probably five sessions, we've put in infectious disease legislation and we've made it one of our priority pieces of legislation that we'd like to get passed, which basically uh, states that any uh, infectious disease defined by the CDC, uh, if our members become sick and ill with that disease, that they would be covered as a line of duty injury, just like as if I fell off the roof and broke my back or, or my leg. Um, so, and, and, and honestly, you know, the chances of me getting infectious disease rather than falling off a roof and breaking my back are a lot higher than I'm going to get the infectious disease. Um, so we've been very proactive. And if that piece of legislation was in place before the pandemic, we would have been covered. Uh, our firefighters, our first responders would have been covered. So that's a very important piece of legislation that we're hopeful this next session. Um, and we'll use what we've learned from the pandemic to, to get this legislation. Uh, there has been special legislation proposed just COVID related uh, for first responders that would give us a statewide coverage um, for first responders and other uh, employees on the front lines dealing with COVID uh, to cover so they didn't have to use their own sick time and their own uh, workers comp and, and things like that. Um, we're hopeful moving into this next session uh, that we can get some, some coverages and some legislation passed to protect our firefighters. Uh, we know this isn't going to be the end. This probably isn't the end of some type of COVID-like strain or other type of um, infectious disease that we're going to be forced to deal with. Again, we're willing to step up. We're always willing to step up, do our job, be exposed. Um, unfortunately, we get sick. We get hurt. We just want the simple coverages to protect uh, our families and ourselves. It's interesting you talk about exposure. Because I know that there's, if someone calls in and they're asking and requesting an ambulance, I believe that there's, because of COVID-19, there are set protocols. I believe that your community actually has a special COVID ambulance and that someone who is calling in has to answer certain amount, certain questions in order for dispatch uh, a proper vehicle. Um, but also for your protection, someone going in, is that something that, has to be written into the legislation to let folks know that 
you know, that maybe people aren't as forthcoming as they should be when it comes to when they're putting in a 911 call and maybe you show up and they're like, oh, by the way, I forgot to tell you. And some of what they're telling you has to do with a possible, you know, COVID um, link. Yeah, I mean, sometimes you can't legislate common sense, though. So we would just ask the general public that if you are experiencing symptoms of COVID and, you know, those protocols are put in place to protect not only the first responders that you are calling to help you, um, but your, your family members as well. Um, you know, I don't know that any type of legislation would kind of help that. Um, you know, again, we, we, we work great. With the with the public, uh, the public is is great. Have been great supporters um, of the fire and police through this whole pandemic. Um, it obviously you get some people. Quite honestly, they just you know they feel um, like there's some type of stigma or something like that. But believe me when I tell you, we've seen it all. We've done it all. There's nothing uh, you're gonna you're gonna embarrass us or nothing to be worried about that you know to protect us. We got a few more minutes left here with you. Well, what as you're looking ahead and as bills are starting to be filed, what are some other bills or legislation that you're looking to have um, be heard during this upcoming session that, that you're probably put in the middle of putting together with your union? Yeah, so we have a uh, we have a very robust and strong legislative team uh, within the PFFM that we work closely with. Uh, and we work closely and we have a great relationship with, with all of our legislators. Um, you know, it's been, we've been a little bit of a deficit because everything is on Zoom where typically we're, we're there banging on doors and having meetings and um, going to events with our legislators. Um, some of our priority legislation this session, what came out of the uh, Chris Roy, uh, who died in the line of duty, he was a single father. Uh, to, and took care of his daughter, Ava Roy. And under, uh, it's called Section 100 of the law, if you get killed in the line of duty like that uh, at a tragic event or responding to or returning from an incident, you get a, the, the spouse, the way that the law stands is only the spouse can get 100% uh, of that deceased firefighter's pay. And there was a, you know, it was done, that law was done in the 80s and Obviously, fa family dynamics have changed uh, since then. Uh, so we had to file special legislation to get Ava Roy her correct benefit and her correct pension uh, because Chris wasn't wasn't married; he was a single dad. So that's something we want. We were able to do through the local home rule process and for the city of Worcester to take care of Ava Roy. We want to look at fixing that on a global level so that any firefighter. Uh, that may not have a spouse, just because the, that's the way the law was written at the time, uh, will get the correct benefit and pension uh, for their children, uh, whoever their beneficiary may be. So that's the big piece of uh, priority legislation that we're working on. Uh, we, we're going to go hard at the infectious disease legislation that that I that I talked about earlier. Uh, now more than ever, we need that legislation and that and that presumptive. Uh, another issue, you know, we deal with, unfortunately, um, it's becoming every day is firefighter cancer. And in the, we were able a couple of years ago to get firefighter cancer uh, classified as an on the duty um, uh, injury and treat it like any other injury. Um, the look back, if so if I was to retire today, if I got cancer within five years, I could go back and revert to a disability. And it's presumed that that cancer was due to the many years on, on the job. What we're finding is the firefighters, the, the, can, the latency period for cancer in firefighters is going out longer. So we're looking to up that from five years to 10 years um, for, to protect firefighters with cancer. Uh, that's some of the you know, priority pieces we'll be working on uh, this session. Um, and we look forward to uh, a productive legislative session coming up. Anything that we haven't touched upon during this segment, but you want to at least take a moment to, to close out with uh, uh, anything? Yeah, no, I, I'd i like to thank, uh, obviously, the, the people that I serve here in Whitman have been great to deal with. The public's been great. Uh, the administration and, and management has been good during this pandemic. Early on, they covered us. Um, I'd mentioned that we were looking for a global fix to be covered 
uh, for firefighters dealing with COVID uh, as far as not using their sick time. Whitman stepped up early and took care of their firefighters that um, if we got sick or needed to be quarantined or anything was COVID related, uh, that we weren't using our own sick time and they took care of their firefighters. Um, I think the proof in what, how we worked together during the COVID situation um, is in the outcome. We had one member uh, during this whole time, unfortunately have COVID, uh, but knock on wood, everyone else has, has remained healthy. If folks want to find out more about uh, the professional firefighters of Massachusetts uh, and what you're working on, if, if, they, if your group needs assistance when it comes to legislation or getting signatures, how can they do that? Is there a website? There is a website. Uh, it's pffm.org. Um, get on our website. You can contact us through there. We have an office in Boston. We're always in. Uh, I'm always around. My phone's always on. Rich, I want to thank you so much for your time and your energy and, and sharing information in regards to the pandemic and the latest uh, with, with what's being worked on by the PFFM. Thank you, Kevin. I appreciate the opportunity.